I thought they challenged us really hard early. They missed us a couple of shots on goal. I reckon they probably should have gotten and, and probably left the door ajar. And then I thought we, we stabilised and, and got a few structure things a little bit better after probably the first 15 minutes of the, the first quarter. And, and then I thought we played some pretty good footy after that. And look, obviously they were down two players. That, that's tough to cover. And the, the chances of you winning after that are, are pretty slim. So. Did you feel yeah. like they played faster than you expected at all? Yeah, they did early, absolutely. Um, you know, once again, we prepared all week to, for them to compose the ball like they did very much against GWS. But you know, I think they probably looked at it and yeah, you know, really challenged us early with a you know mark in what, into a handball game. So um, yeah, you know, it was a really good good strategy from them early up, especially when we were expecting probably the opposite. Mm. Justin Martin looked like he was out there to prove a point today. Plenty of experience out, but um, he certainly made up for it. What did you think of his game? Yeah, he's good. I think he's you know his last probably three weeks have been pretty solid and. Look, Dusty, when you look back at the history of him, he probably starts the season a little bit slower, um, but then he starts to come into the game and, and starts to dominate. I thought he was outstanding. He looked really quick and fast around the clearances today. I think he might have had eight or nine um, and looked really good up forward as well. What's certainly helped us is, you know, I thought Nick Lawson through the middle allow us to play him a little bit more forward and Josh Caddy's gone more through there with the, the concerns that we've had with losing some players. So um, our balance in and around the contest has been very good. Nick Vlosson? Yeah, big volume. Oh, he's probably more of a defensive-minded mid. Um, you know, he plays it as a defender, like a traditional centreman, I, I would probably call it. Um, he's very balanced and very poised with the ball. We like his decision-making. We also like his ability to compete in one-on-one -on -one contests. And, you know, we've probably tried it over the years with varying degrees of success. Um, it worked for us this week. Do we uh, look to go forward with it? We'll, we'll assess the tape and, and see what we make of it. especially with the injury side of things? It is, because we've, we've really grown as a side and we've evolved, which is really exciting for us. The opportunities that's presented to the players and the pleasing thing as a coach, uh, sorry, as a coaching group, is that the players have grabbed that, those opportunities with both hands. You know, our, our development program, once again, I always applaud it, but for those guys to be able to step up and play this type of footy they are has been terrific. But more importantly, it's the guys that have stepped up to fill the void of a loss of experience, like Brandon Ellis, uh, Camden McIntosh, Kane Lambert, these type of players, Josh Caddy, have really stepped up in the, in the absence of those blokes. And that's what makes us really proud as a club about it. I know you're, you're a big fan of Brandon Ellis. I know you've talked about that a lot. But yeah. he really has responded to, to probably being out a fringe player for a while now. Yeah, he has. Um, look, he's had some challenges, there's no doubt. And he, he the, the great thing about Brandon, the thing I love, is he accepts the areas that he's got to get better at. But also, as a coaching group, we probably didn't, I probably didn't understand and back any strengths enough. Um, and, you know, and that was on me. And to his credit, he's gone on and he's playing some wonderful footy because he's playing his natural game. You know, his ability to run and create and use the ball and mark has just been really evident for me to see, which is really pleasing. Have those players that have stepped up exceeded your expectations or is it a bit of an unknown? You're not, you're it's, probably, it's probably an unknown. It's hard to put a ceiling on those guys. You know, once again, because there are other, there are other dominant players around them, they, they probably have got strengths that are a little bit... We, we don't see them as much. But now when those players are out, they've stepped up in that, those areas of the game. So our expectation now is when those players eventually do come back, they continue to, to look the same sort of player they are now, which will be a really big positive for us. Yeah, he's... Um, how do I harness them? <laughs> it's a very good question. We sort of don't want to in a way. Like, I, I sit there and I watch him and I get excited on the bench watching what he can do. He's got a long way to go, don't get me wrong, but what I love is ability when he's in the contest to impact. Um, God, he's quick as well, isn't he? Like, the, the way he plays the game and, um, you know, recruiters... Uh, made a brave call, I think, at the, the, the draft table two years ago and, and plucked his name out because the, they liked what he could offer. Um, and we're starting to see that. He's still a long way off being his absolute best. We understand that, but we're certainly excited about the way he's playing at the moment. When, when you see him in four or five years' time, <laughs> positionally, because he seems like he can play... He's probably, probably under another coach, mate, to be honest, <laughs> <laughs> at that stage. But um, I, I, I don't know. I, I think primarily we see him as a back. But then we love what he gives us up forward. And um, we, we probably haven't had a genuine swing man uh, for a long period of time. So that's something we like. You know, his ability to pinch it in the ruck and up forward to go from that is, uh, is exciting. But we always talk about settling him down, but he just keeps exciting us every time we put him somewhere.
was Sydney stat got to do to get a riding star number <laughs> I'm not sure how it works, actually. Like, I was probably stiff that, you know, poor old Jackie Ross has been in outstanding form as, you know, then he's out for eight weeks, so he doesn't probably get his nomination. But, look, I, I think any of our players are quite, you know, capable of getting it. Noah, uh, Shea, Sydney, uh, you know, Bakes has had his opportunities, and I'm forgetting one, I'm sure of it. But, you know, I think as, from our point of view, our, our development boys have stood up and performed really, really well. Um, yeah, they're quality lads, quality players, and they're only going to improve as well, which is exciting for our club. Is it unusual to see Tom Lynch have some frustrations boil over James Sicily there? Um, oh, it was. Look, look, James is that sort of player. He he's an incredible talent. That kid, he's uh, he's a player I'd come to watch. I, I love the way he plays the game, and he plays it to the line. Um, I love that about our game. You know, do we need the umpire paying a free kick for when Tom shoves him down? No, I don't know. Let the guys play. Let them have a crack. In the day, they've been at each other from go to woe. It's nice to have a little bit of leniency every now and then. But, you know, I thought it was a great contest. But, you know, Tom kicks three goals. I had a, at the start of the day, I would have said that's a great result for us. And I thought James played a pretty good game as well. You know, they're both pretty good players. Does it suggest, I mean, if Tom Lynch is getting frustrated given his extremely mild manner sort of guy, does that suggest that really Sicily has taken it to the line? No, nah, Tom's, Tom's got a mean streak in him. Um, you know, I thought James Sicily played it really well. It's a good player. That's what good players do. Play to the lead, play to the edge. Uh, play to the edge. Yeah, didn't know. Just with Brandon Ellis, you said that you, I think you, you didn't back in his strengths enough. Was that you're focusing on more on the weaknesses? Is that sort of? Yeah, I was probably looking at areas of his game that, once again, they're not, they're not poor, but they're they're probably below some in some areas. But what I sort of forgot as a coach, and it was really poor on my behalf, is that he's great in a lot of areas. I've got to remind myself to look at those areas. And now we're seeing the dividends of our coaching group backing him in. You know, Adam Kingsley's been terrific for him, really backed him in the way he's played and really driven his development from that. So it's a good reminder to all us coaches, really, at stages. Look at what they can't do, not what they can't. Look Sorry. what they can do, not what they can't. How does that happen? Is there a moment there that you sort of thought, actually, let's, let's give this guy another go and you really back him in? It happens from time to time. And, you know, at stages, I've got to get better at catching myself doing it. I, I know when I'm at my worst and... Uh, you know, unfortunately, Brandon's one of those guys. He's probably really close to me that cops it the most. So, um, but I couldn't be happier for the kid. Oh no, it was probably. You know, once again, when all when all the troops were up and going, it was probably trying to fit all the guys in, and I probably looked at what Brandon couldn't do as compared to what he could do. Um, you know, and that was on me as a coach. Mm. Sorry. No, I think we actually got through, which is terrific um, for a change, so that's great.